I think of myself as a photographer and sometimes a model. But what's funny is that I do not think of myself as a video person. Yet the number one way that I reach out to you is with videos. One question that has come up on almost every one of my recent videos is, what are you using for your videos? The answer is that it changes a lot depending on what I'm doing. But my most common setup here in the studio in 2016 is my Nikon D810 with the very versatile 24 to 70 f 2.8 FX lens or the uber crisp 85 millimeter f 1.8 lens. I've been shooting at 1080p and 60 frames per second. The switch to 60 frames per second has been a hot topic as many of you think it brings the videos a more personal feel while it freaks out others of you. I like it, so I use it. There's a time and a place for other settings and I've done videos for my channel in virtually every setting available on my phone, my DSLR cameras and my mirrorless cameras. Some of you have heard me say this before. I don't like DSLRs for video. For me, the DSLR form factor is much better suited for still photography. In fact, my very first YouTube videos were with an old school camcorder. I don't even have one around here to show you, but there's something to be said for the more video oriented form factor where you can grip and control the camera with one hand. In one sense, I think that phones have more or less replaced consumer video cameras. Every day we're seeing new phones that can shoot 4K video. There certainly is a camcorder market and I did have my eye on one of the Sony one inch sensor options for a while. Of the cameras that I own now, my Nikon one series V1 camera has been my favorite for shooting video outside of the studio. The V1 is a couple of generations old without the technical options that my D810 has, but it's small and it's easy to hold. And recently I purchased Nikon's 10 to 100 power zoom lens for the one series, which is really geared towards videography. In fact, it's, really lived on my V1 since it arrived. And later this week, you'll actually see my full review of this combination. So my question to you is, what are you using for video? And feel free to answer this question either as a home and family oriented user, a professional user, or both. While I have a DSLR shooting video on a tripod right now, as I say these words, for me, it's a still camera doing the job of a video camera for the purpose of what I'm doing right now, standing still in a controlled environment. But what if I were following children or a pet around the house or outdoors? The D810 would quickly be outmatched by fast moving options. The lens would be hunting for focus and I would be trying to manually zoom all over the place. For me, that type of responsive photography, let's call it, is more easily done in a traditional video camera. Don't get me wrong though. For filmmakers, there are all sorts of rigs and add-ons that you can buy and attach to turn a DSLR or mirrorless camera into a true cinematic video rig. I've dabbled in that, but I still feel like the scene had to be carefully controlled and it wasn't necessarily suited for unpredictable action and me having the ability to be responsive to it. In fact, the first thing that I reach for when I need quick video with high quality where things might get unpredictable is this, my phone, which is incidentally capturing my audio right now. Even sometimes my iPad or this super low price Fire tablet are handy to grab for quick video. These not quite dedicated video devices do as good a job as many point and shoot cameras with video, and even better depending on the make and model of the phone or tablet. The bottom line for me is that I have two video projects going on right now that are more of a video production than my typical YouTube videos. I added the 10 to 100 lens to my V1 setup and I'm moving forward with it for those projects. It still feels like I'm compromising a bit. I looked at getting an entirely new system with the Panasonic GH4, but at the end of the day, I already own a lot of the flexibility that comes with the one system and even a second V1 body. So I figured that the gear that I do have is better right now than the gear that I don't. Before I sign off, I'm not saying what I've done should be everyone's choice or anyone's choice. What I am doing today is sharing with you all my process of decision-making and problem solving for these projects. But I'd also like to ask you, what are you doing for video? 
occasional shots with your phone, more serious work with a phone, or a mirrorless camera, or a DSLR? Have you tried different solutions and come upon one that is ideal for you? And did you spend a lot or a little? And are you happy with what you've got? For me, I can't say that I'm 100% happy with my new in the field video setup as I move forward with these two projects, but I'm going with it. And I'm really interested in what you all are doing for video. So let me know in the comments. And if you do have questions of your own, I'm certain that either me or some of the other commenters out there would be happy to help. 